In this video, we're going to take a look at Horizon Technology Finance, ticker symbol HRZN. This is a pretty popular request I get from people on YouTube, as well as some people over on our Patreon. So I figured it'd be a really good idea to go in depth on this stock and dedicate a video towards it because it really does offer some pretty attractive features. Their stock currently offers a dividend yield that exceeds 11% and it pays monthly dividends. Plus they just recently had a dividend increase less than a year ago. So let's take a deeper look into HRZN and see if this stock is worthy of consideration for investors seeking income or growth. Horizon Technology Finance Corporation is a business development company that specializes in lending and investing in development stage companies. They're a leading provider of secured loans to venture capital-backed and private equity-backed growth stage companies. They focus on making secure debt and venture lending investments to venture-backed capital companies in the technology, life science, healthcare information, and sustainability industries. Additionally, they generate attractive risk-adjusted returns through additional capital appreciation through warrants. The company was founded back in 2008 and they had their IPO back in 2010. Horizon Technology Finance is one of several BDCs that make investments that target technology and life science startups. There's several other BDCs that also invest in these same kinds of companies, including Hercules Capital, ticker symbol HTGC, Triple Point Venture Growth, ticker TPVG, and Trinity Capital, ticker TRIN. However, out of all these companies, Horizon Technology is currently the smallest in terms of portfolio size. Actually, according to the Sovereign Wealth Fund Institute, HRZN is one of the smallest publicly traded business development companies that exists in terms of portfolio size. A lot of people have been wondering if it's a good time to invest in these kinds of business development companies, considering recent events involving Silicon Valley banks closing and the possibility of a recession coming up. Back in May, the chief investment officer over at Trinity Capital gave some really good insight into the BDC sector, specifically for those companies that invest in tech and life science startups. According to Kyle Brown, BDCs like Trinity Capital have actually been seeing more startups coming to them looking for funding opportunities. This has been creating a better pool of candidates that these BDCs can pick from and should result in higher quality partnerships with better businesses. With the closing of Silicon Valley Bank and fewer banks willing to lend out money right now, it's resulted in fewer options for these companies that are seeking more funding to expand their businesses. But given how volatile the stock market has been recently, it's also been discouraging another popular way that companies have traditionally expanded, which is by having an initial public offering. Corporations prefer to have their company's IPO take place when there's a bull market, because this can create a lot more hype around their stock, and everyone loves a new tech investment during a bull market. But the number of IPOs has slowed down a lot over the last year, and the stock market has been so volatile that many companies are just unwilling to pursue this right now. This slide in their investor presentation shows the huge potential Horizon Technology has when it comes to investing in the types of companies that they target. Between the third quarter of 2022 and the second quarter of 2023, the amount of money invested in technology, life science, and healthcare technology was more than $124 billion. Horizon Technology estimates that their addressable market, which is venture debt, is roughly $26 billion. Given everything going on in the stock market and the economy, there's still a substantial demand for funding that BDCs are able to provide. And with fewer lending options currently existing, this will ensure that this company will continue to have a steady stream of companies wanting their services. According to their latest 10Q, as of June 30th of this year, Horizon Technology has a total portfolio size of $715.4 million. That's money spread out among roughly 156 different companies in a mixture of debt and warrants. Two of their investments are currently on non-accrual status, meaning that these investments aren't earning interest due to the borrowers being unable to pay. The total amount in non-accrual status is roughly $25.6 million, meaning that roughly 3.5% of their investment dollars aren't earning income. This is pretty comparable to other BDCs, including the venture-focused ones like Trinity Capital. I think that considering the fact that they're a much smaller BDC, these are actually some pretty encouraging results in terms of their ability to pick good investments. Looking at the diversity of their investments, roughly 26% are in biotechnology companies. These are businesses that integrate natural sciences and technology to create products like treatments, vaccines, gene therapy, cloning, and so forth. These investments by nature tend to be riskier because their success can depend on one product or treatment that they're hoping to create. 20% of their investments are in software companies, 18% are in medical device companies, and 15% are consumer-related tech companies. Overall, roughly 43% of the companies that they invest in are in the life science sector, 40% are in technology, and 12% are in sustainable companies, and then finally 5% are in healthcare information services. There's some pretty interesting stuff when you look at some of the companies that Horizon Technology is investing in. They have a portfolio section on their website and you can see what kind of products that their borrowers are developing. One of their investments is in a company called Kodiak, who are making sensors for big rigs to make them safer for drivers. Another investment of theirs is in AccuVein, which allows healthcare professionals to get a quicker and better assessment of someone's veins. Then you've also got Rocket Pharma, who are working on gene therapies for several inherent cardiovascular diseases. So there's a lot of pretty cool stuff going on here with what this company is investing in. 
I think it should be noted though that Horizon Technology did have a rougher start in the beginning. You can usually tell this by when you look at a company's investor presentation. If they show you their stock's total return over a random period of time compared to when they first launched, it's usually a sign that things started out rough for a stock. We can see over the last five years that HRZN has significantly outperformed the NTRAX BDC index by a huge amount, which is really great. But if we look at their overall share price performance since their IPO, we can see this stock was lackluster for its first six years. Looking at their net asset value, otherwise known as their book value, which is an extremely important metric for a BDC, this was also on a constant decline for many years for this stock. I think it should also be noted that their stock did have two good-sized dividend cuts during their early years. Fortunately though, starting in roughly 2017, Horizon Technology did start posting much more consistent returns. It was also around this time that their NAV began to stabilize, and as a result, so did their share price. So even though they had a less than stellar first few years, performance-wise, this has been a much better performing company for many years now. If we look at their dividend distribution history over the last five years, we can see that they've been very consistent with their monthly distributions. We can see that they paid a pretty good size special dividend in 2020, 2021, and 2022, so hopefully they'll issue another big one this year. I'll finish this up by looking at a few odds and ends with this company. Regarding the tax treatment of their dividends, like most BDCs, their dividends are taxed as ordinary income. This is one of the biggest downsides to investing in a BDC unless you're doing so in a retirement account. Some business development companies like Main Street Capital actually pay a mixture of both qualified dividends and ordinary income. But you can see that still the majority of the distributions that they pay are still qualified as ordinary income. In terms of insider ownership, it's pretty average compared to other BDCs. According to Finviz, the insiders own 1.36% of all outstanding shares of their stock. This isn't really worth noting in this case, but a high insider ownership percentage is a good sign that the board of directors are really optimistic about their company's future. Finally, taking a look at their overall performance since their IPO, we can see that despite a difficult start for this company, their stock still provided an average annual return of 8.34%. That's still pretty good even though things weren't going so well at the beginning. A $10,000 investment in this stock would now be worth $27,935. If we look at their overall return since January of 2017, when things really started to stabilize for this company, they've seen an average annual return of 12.65%. The amount this stock returned to shareholders in a significantly less amount of time is pretty impressive. With all of this in mind, Horizon Technology Finance, in my opinion, has been a very solid BDC for a number of years. Their recent performance with low non-accruals and their well-covered dividend have been a really good sight to see. For people seeking a monthly dividend paying stock with a high yield and aren't as concerned about growth would do well in considering this company for their portfolio. There's only a handful of BDCs that pay dividends monthly, and HRZN is one that continues to do pretty well. But there's a couple important things that I think all investors should keep in mind. On average, these smaller BDCs are usually riskier than the larger BDCs. That's simply because when you have a smaller investment portfolio, it'll take less non-accrual debt on your balance sheet to have an impact on the dividend distribution. If we compare Horizon Technology's $715 million portfolio with Hercules Capital's $2.94 billion portfolio, Hercules can afford to make more bad calls in their lending than Horizon Technology can without having their dividend being affected. With that in mind, it's my opinion that anyone who's seriously interested in making an investment in this stock should be careful about making it too large of a position in your overall portfolio. But overall, I think it's a pretty decent dividend stock. The reason I don't currently hold it is because I'm currently very heavy in BDCs already. When it comes to these BDCs that invest in tech startups, my favorite right now has to be Hercules Capital. Even though they don't pay monthly, they've had a lot more growth and dividend increases. But this stock might be something I'll consider later in the future. But with that being said, that's going to conclude our look at Horizon Technology Finance Corporation. If you're interested, feel free to check out my Patreon where you'll find an Excel sheet of all of my holdings updated monthly. Plus it'll give you access to our Discord channel where we discuss higher yielding types of investments. With that being said, thank you all so much for watching today's video. If you liked what you saw, then feel free to hit that like button below and click subscribe if you want to see higher yielding investing strategy content. Again, thank you all so much for watching today's video and until next time, take care.